fewer than 50 women in the history of this country have had the opportunity or the challenge, however you looked at it, to do that. And you had to make decisions about where you were going to be very, very public and where you are not. And how did you make those choices and how did you stick by, the, particularly the private part? I imagine that was not easy. Yeah. Um, uh, being my professional career helped me. Okay. I always say, I'm, I'm curious when people say, well, how did you figure out how to be the first lady? And it's like, well, you know, I didn't wake up the first lady, although that's what happens in the course of the campaign. <laughs> you know, the, the spouse becomes just that, the spouse. And it's almost as if the life before that disappears and you're kind of you know, wading through the muck of who you became in the campaign to say, I, I was a whole person before this, <laughs> a really whole person who went to college and law school and worked as an attorney and built a nonprofit organization. I worked as an assistant to the mayor. I worked as a deputy commissioner of planning and development. I was an associate dean at the University of Chicago. I was a senior vice president of community affairs at the University of Chicago hospitals. I did a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so all that stuff kind of prepared me on how to build organizations and programs mm. and how to create limits and set boundaries around a set of goals. And I applied that to my time at the First Ladies, uh, as, as the First Lady. Um, I knew, first of all, that the, the de desires and demands would just be infinite. You could feel it on the campaign trail. You know, the amount of issues that you confront, the real issues that are happening in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And when people think that you can change it, they implore you to do so. Yes. And every issue does matter. Yes. It really does. But there is just no way that one person in one administration for four years or eight years, if you're lucky, can do everything.